good. Um, I don't know. Hi, everyone. We started a bit late. There were some technical difficulties. Uh, we're, we're now starting, and it's being recorded just so that those in attendance know. Okay. So, um, Nate, I've got my preamble here. Are they going to show? I, heard, I saw today that the uh, Zoom, the uh, virtual meeting, uh, it's, has been extended to 2025 today. Right. Yeah. Effective immediately. And so the town, you know, we can, you know, um, the town manager said we'll continue meeting remotely. And then they're working on whether it's a policy or some guidelines or, you know, if, if a border committee would want to meet in person, the idea is that it'd probably be a hybrid format where people can still be remote because the idea is we would, um, you know, want to provide the same level of service and meeting recordings as we oh, are. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was just wondering if the preamble was going to get shortened to that point. Oh, uh, no, I think tonight we can just do the normal one. Um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that was really my only question. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, and I uh, misplaced my document that shows me all the things that I'm supposed to do in order. So you correct me whenever I'm going wrong, but I think at this point I'm opening the this meeting of the Historical Commission, March 30th, 2023. Um, and pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC30A section 18, and pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended by chapter 22 of the acts of 2022 and extended again by the state legislature on July 14th, 2022 and signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This public hearing and public meeting of the town of Amherst historical commission is being conducted via remote participation. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by zoom or by telephone. No in-person person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to this here to this meeting and hearing uh, has been posted on the town's online calendar. <sighs> I think maybe now we go to a roll call attendance vote. Yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, roll call attendance vote. Um, Pat off. Present. Maddie Helmer. Maddie Helmer, are you present? Oh, well, you're muted. <laughs> present. Thank you. Uh, Becky Lockwood. So I have to remember everybody's last name is Becky Lockwood. <laughs> present. <laughs> Eddie Startup. Present. And Robin Fordham. I am present. Uh, it really helps when the last names are in the windows there, Nate. <laughs> I don't know why they're not there for my cheat sheet today. Um, so uh, I believe that we are going to start. So Nate, I did not see an agenda in my um, in my emails or in the packet. And I know that we have three separate properties. Are we convening? You want to just suggest how we should go about convening these hearings? I mean, we should open to public hearing for all three properties go through significance first, then preferably preserved for uh, for anything that's been found significant. Right, yeah, so I think the, um, because they're owned um, by the same owner, I think we can open the hearing for all three. And then, you know, we can walk, we can um, hear a presentation or look at uh, documentation for all three of them, but then, you know, we could take votes individually but I think okay. it would make sense to open the hearing for all three. Yep. Okay. And do we need a vote to open the hearing? I can't remember. No, no, you can just read the, the you know, the only, there is no agenda other than the legal notice it's because okay. it is just the hearing. So it's just okay. the, yep. All right. I think I'm using a, a previous version with the new addresses. So hopefully this is right. So in accordance with the provisions of MGL chapter, Mass General Law chapter 40A and article 3.60 of Amherst General Bylaws, Preservation of historically significant buildings. This public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. The Amherst Historical Commission is holding this public hearing to provide an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the following demolition, demolition application requests. They are 126 Southeast Street, Salumi Construction, a request to demolish 
a circa, excuse me, 1920 single family home on property and any attached structures. 140 Southeast Street, Salumi Construction, request to demolish a circa 1900 two family home on property and any attached structures. And 148 Southeast Street, Salumi Construction, request to demolish a circa 1927 single family home on property and any attached structures. So with that, uh, do we go to town information first or do we go to our applicant presentation first, Nate? I think we can ask the applicants if, if they're here to raise their hands and they can make the presentation okay. and then staff report. John, we're gonna ask you to be become a panelist. That way you can um, just speak and make it easier. Okay, hello everyone. Hello. Hello. Give me two seconds. And there we are. <clears throat> okay. Um, so the three properties in that, that we've applied for are all on Southeast Street. Um, the of the houses that uh, we're looking at are in pretty rough shape. They've been, they've had multiple renovations done throughout the years. Um, and I think the, uh, the oldest structure has had um, several renovations at some point, um, which I'm not sure if Nate, were you able to get my email that I sent late this afternoon? Yeah, I was just getting those uh, opened up. Okay. So um, I'm not sure if you'd like to start just speaking in general and that, um, you know, we were looking to demolish the three houses to uh, make room for um, some more housing that uh, could be similar to what is across uh, what we're building across the street. Um, is there is there any preference or would, would someone like to hear about any of them individually or I mean, there's not a, a lot to say there's. I could not find a whole lot of history on, on many. Um, I know that uh, the information came back with one of them that's posted or could be posted on the eight, 18, I can't recall off the top of my head, I'm sorry, but the, the map that was, uh, that was associated with it. Yeah, that, that was, um, I did the research earlier this week. That was uh, the Edwards house, Simeon Edwards. That was mm -hmm. the one where you can see the title chain ties back to him and you can see him on the, I think it was the 1860 map. Okay. And then, so, uh, sorry, John, just quickly, if you want to share your screen, you can. If not, I can. I could, you know, share my screen. You, you know, as a panelist, you're able to do that. So if you have anything you wanted to do or. I'm just, uh, I'm kind of limited as to what I can do uh, with my tablet yep. and it and uh, I've kind of locked myself away from where my emails and pictures are and um, sure. I'm just I'll, fearful that I'll lose you all. Sure let me um, I'm going to share my screen I was just going to do the um, Google Street View to start and then we can get to the pictures but at least that, sure. that way we have you know um, we can walk through the, the property so Okay, so this is uh, 127, and this has a board form foundation, board form concrete foundation. Um, it's had uh, multiple additions and renovations. Uh, everything to the right is an addition. Um, the interior is um, is is definitely seen, um, definitely seen a, a fair amount of use. Um, the electrical in here is definitely due for another upgrade. Um, and it has been recited and there are some windows in it, but it's, um, this is probably the best of the three houses and, um, it's still, uh, I, I don't have any pictures of the interior. There's, um, other than I, 
do I think I believe I, I believe I sent some to to Nate that have the the basement. Yeah, yeah we can look at those after the street view if you'd like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is the 140. This is um, the house that has is the oldest, I guess. Um, so what I found today was <clears throat> that at some point, I believe this house was either rebuilt or or redone. There's uh, about if you could pull back on that, uh, kind of go, um, yeah, go to the left a little bit so you can see the edge of it. Yeah, go that way a little bit more. Look sideways. So that <clears throat> everything from that corner back is is a is an addition. Um, and everything in the front of the house was actually raised at one point because underneath the um, underneath that stone, um, there's probably a foot foot and a half of of uh, red brick on top of the rubble foundation that's underneath. Um, the floor joists in there are standard um, rough sans floor joists. Um, they do not appear to be, to me, they don't appear to be um, uh, older than the 1900s. So I'm not sure if the floor was taken out when the, when the addition was put on, but it does not, it doesn't seem to match. I, I currently live um, in a, uh, a house that uh, was finished in 1789. So I do have a little bit of experience with uh, older looking houses and um, and what we've gotten into in, in our trade as to what, uh, as far as um, renovations and things like that. So um, the house is, the house is in pretty rough shape. It's being held up by some, some four by fours and, uh, and some posts and it is, it is, and it is not, uh, it, it's going to require, uh, it would require a ton of work just to get it back to um, something decent. Um, it also has new siding that was probably put on in the 40s or 50s, which was which is that um, um, it's kind of like a, a ribbed panelized um, siding. And the windows were were put in some years ago and they don't really fit the openings. And there's some photos of that that I that I picked up on today. Um, 148 is definitely of the uh, 1930s uh, foundation. And um, the addition in the back was sometime after that. So that's, uh, that's just a regular um, CMU block foundation in the back. The front is what I assume was the original part of the house. Um, I didn't see, I didn't see inside of this one. Um, but I can tell you it has the same siding as the other, the other house next door. All right. Great. And I was going to do the new share, uh, or maybe I'll stop this and, um, oh, yeah, I'll go to the emails just so we can, um, oops. if we walk through the images, John, if you want to sure. just. I mean, it might be the same thing, but we can just, if there's something you see that's different. Right. This one, this one is the same. This is the 148. It shows the, the 1930s block with the, with the more modern uh, straight block behind. Yeah. Kind of a little, little odd intersection. of blue Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, and then this is the back of the house. You can see how the windows are um, fit in or not. Um, so this is the back of one, the back of one forty eight. Correct. Now this is one forty, <clears throat> and it has the same same siding as one forty eight. Is this is it? Sorry, I just see the meter. Is this a two family? Is this is it considered a two family? I, guess I, I would, believe so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think you're right with the addition. And you'll see, so if you look at those stones there, you'll see that that's what the house is supported on once we go in the basement. If I can, those are clear, which are, um, they're tipped and pitched as the, the rubble foundation underneath is kind of falling apart. So this is the framing from underneath. Um, it's a 
full two by six um, with uh, with a you know rough sawn two by six with with planking on top. Um, I think the next picture shows it a little bit better. Nope. <laughs> but this is uh, so to the right is is a pier that's been hollowed out. I don't know if it was an original chimney, but it's definitely holding a beam or trying to hold a beam and there's not much left of it. Um, <clears throat> and this is where the, the brick and the rubble foundation come together. In the back. And so this is where the back addition is. So the correct. So the, this stone is probably under the front facing part of the house, and this is under the yeah. rear. Yes. Yep. There's the more images of that. And that's on the other side, the brick as it comes up to the front towards the front of the house. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's a that's the back wall. I believe that there was one more. I thought there was one more photo of the underside, but yeah, I'll keep scrolling down. I don't know. If I printed it as a PDF. If it would... <clears throat> okay, so there's there's kind of the transition there. It's on the on, to the left of what was a door opening there. That's where the where the transition from rubble foundation to to brick. Mm -hmm. And so there you can see that the, the it was it was either pushed up or or rebuilt. I'm not exactly sure. But you have the rubble foundation and then you have the brick, the brickwork on top. And then on top of that, you have the um, the flat stone that everything kind of sits on. Yeah, my um, I used to own a house on Halleck Street that had the same same kind of configuration and mm -hmm. stone and then and then a brick level. OK. And it was built in, in um, 1860, that one. OK. All right. Yeah, more pictures of the foundation. This is all. This is all 140, right? The, yes, it is. Yes. I was trying to. Th I thought you had sent a. Um, there there, one. Yeah, there's the that last one is the one where it shows from the outside. You can see that the the stone mm -hmm. is sitting on top of the uh, the brick, and then yeah. the other picture shows it that way. Okay. Right. And then there's also an, another email. I'll just make sure that's. This is. Um, what, how, what number is this? 127. This is 127. All right. Mm -hmm. So it has vinyl siding. Um, that's the board form finished uh, concrete foundation. And then this is the, the basement, uh, basement area uh, framing. And is this for one, is this 127 as well still? Yes, it is. And is that a true two by or is that just dimensional lumber? Um, it is uh, It is more closely to, to dimensional lumber. I did not measure it, but um, I'm not sure if what I was looking at was had been replaced. There has been some work that's been done on, the, on this home as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then here's just the electrical panel. Yeah, there's some, there's an older electrical panel and, and some older, what looks to be knob and tube or some sort of mm -hmm. um, equipment that's tied in up there as well. Right, yeah, I think those are the images. Yep, that, that's pretty much everything that I had. I wasn't sure exactly what, what you folks would need to kind of make a determination, but it just was... Uh, was out there today and just wanted to get a few additional photos to kind of give you, give an idea on on what it was what it's sitting on and and how it was built from underneath thank you mm -hmm. um nate do we have more information from the town <clears throat> yeah i think the um well <laughs> hold on one second the um you know, I, I uploaded some information to the online packet and I'll share that in a minute. I think the, there's, there's not a lot of research. So, you know, Robin, uh, as chair did the title chain back to try to determine, you know, the age of the homes or, you know, who lived there in terms of the town's research, you know, the, the homes are outside of a national register, the ECM or village center, 
they weren't part of a proposed expansion. They've never been inventoried. You know, uh, back in the 60s and 70s, the town in the 80s, the town started inventorying properties, whether it was just with photographs or, you know, any hi history that was, you know, uh, the town engineer at the time could find. And on these properties, I think it was in the 70s, all that there is is just a picture. And there's no information about anything in terms of what used to be there. So sometimes if the, if, you know, if the home was, say, related to a, a certain family or had been part of a certain use, they may have made, you know, there had been some handwritten notes actually saying, oh, this was part of an old farmstead or something. And honestly, I, I couldn't find it. I went through special collections and, and there really wasn't a lot. And so I was just going to share my screen again. I think, you know, what, what is, um, here's this 1873 map if this is visible. And so, you know, Robin was saying is that, um, just gonna zoom in a little bit, you know, the Watson farm uh, here and there's the Watson house here. And then- um, Nick, can you, um, uh, let's say, can you center that area at all or is that? Yeah, I was, I was trying to- um, There we go, that's a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and then also okay. bring it into focus, into yeah. view. Perfect. So, you know, this is, um, you know, this is part of the, right now here's the school building, the uh, East School, and you know, this is the town common, East, the East Village, you know, the East Town Common. And so here's, you know, where we're, here's uh, essentially Route 9 is somewhere here, and then there's a house here, and then the Cutler House here. And you know, again, this is 1873, and, you know, although we can trace back, um, some families, I can't say definitively that these two squares well, the, here represent the, the homes that are right, there. Right, that's right. So Clarissa Cutler is definitely on that um, for the, what was it 140 is the center one. Clarissa, right. Clarissa, uh, and, and it's the house that sticks out to me the most visually as like, you know, one of these is not like the other is, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, so. Yeah, and so I think, you know, it's just hard to say exactly, you know, for instance, you, um, John, you said the home may have been moved or raised, and perhaps that was the case. I mean, this is, was historically a really wet area. I mean, the Fort River is just off the screen to the right here. And, you know, this, the water comes down here. You can see the stream here. You know, this is all wetland here. And, I, you know, I feel like the water just would have just moved right down through where those homes were. Um, you know, here are the, the images that were um, associated with the application. They're small, but just to walk through them um, and, you know, the application forms themselves, you know, the dates of the homes, uh, the legal notice. So I think, you know, I mentioned that the dates of the homes are interesting. Um, the assessor's records were updated a few points in history where, you know, there were a major update of assessor's records. And I mentioned this to the applicant that 1900 is a date that is a default date that when they were transcribing from handwritten records and maybe going into digital, if something wasn't legible or there was a mistake, 1900 is a date that just populated a lot of um, property cards and as does 1966. You know, I don't know why those two dates, but if you look at certain properties, you'll see 1900 a lot. And so I think that's that number may not be as accurate. The 1920 and 1927, interestingly enough, may be accurate um, just because it's, you know, it's a, a specific year. I, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to tie it back, but, you know, I think that's the only, I mean, that's really the only research I have, you know, these homes were here in 1956. They're part of a little neighborhood here. And, you know, but I don't, you know, I couldn't find any, anything that really tied them back. When, when you were looking in special collections, um, Nate, I know I got that information too late. Were you able to look under Simeon Edwards or Clarissa Cutler to? No, I just did some quick searches. I didn't see anything. And so, okay. so it's so, possible know, there might, I mean, I'm just curious if it's possible there might be a little bit of more information um, just because I ran out of, I ran out of time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, yeah. So the research the town would typically do is try to find the names and then figure out if it's the same house. And it's just sure. hard to make that connection right now. Sure. Yep. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not clear. Okay. Um, do we have questions uh, from commissioners uh, for either the applicant or Nate? You can raise your hand or just go ahead and speak freely or shake your head no. <laughs> 
Uh, Hetty has a question. Yeah, I, I want to ask you a little bit, um, John, about uh, ownership. You know, when did um, you acquire these houses? You know, do you know anything about whether they were rented or empty? Or do you know much about, say, the last 10, 15 years of what's um, been going on in these buildings? Not just in terms of the physical what we can physically see, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what kind of rentals have they been? Or I, I don't have them? the specifics as to what they were as far as rentals. Yes, they are rentals. Um, and, um, and I believe they're student rentals and they were purchased a few years back and I don't have the date exactly, but I did run across it when I, when I put the application through um, when the owner had bought each property. So were they bought when the new um, apartment block was under construction or when the foundations were going in across the street? No, these this was purchased um, a few years back. So that would have been it was prior to the start of the of the of the other of the other um, project. OK. OK. Yeah. Thank you. I, I want to say it was more than five years ago or somewhere in that neighborhood, if I had to recall. So with the three houses that mm -hmm. we're looking at for tonight, are we looking at six rentals or four rentals or eight rentals? How many, how many units are there? Just, I'm uh, just curious. I, I believe one of them is listed as a duplex. The mm -hmm. other, the other is just a, a single family mm -hmm. and I'm not sure of 148. Um, so right, it's the three, one the, I believe it's yeah. total of three, three rentals, but one of them is split. Okay. Uh, Into a duplex. Is, yeah. But it is student housing. And then the one with the gambrel roof, 148, mm -hmm. that's the one you're not sure about how it was rented. It, they're all, they're all student rentals. Yeah. Okay. And that's a single rental on 148. Got it. Got it. I mean, if, just, a, this is just a comment rather than a question, but um that house is looks to me like you know it's the most viable am i wrong about that um, um i just want to jump in heading yeah unfortunately viability really isn't isn't a question for, for, right <laughs> so um okay good point yep yep i'm gonna i'm gonna pass no, be hand raised okay <laughs> that's fine <laughs> it's okay Go ahead, Pat. Nope, oh, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, my question is, before you filed the demolition request, was any attempt made to see if, if the buildings were sold to be moved, that that is a possibility? Uh, and I guess structurally, could they be moved? Um, of the two that I was underneath today, I would say no. And I can't imagine that the 148 is in that good a shape just because of the way the addition was put on on the back. Um, could they be moved? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a house mover, but but I know that looking at the two that I was underneath, I, I don't believe I would attempt to move them. There wouldn't be anything left. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nate, go ahead. You're muted, Nate. Yeah, I realized that. Sorry, I was looking online. The, um, the property cards indicate that the current owner bought these in 2003. So they've been owned for you know 20 years and going back on some of the, on two of the properties, it looks like, I mean, it's really hard to say some of the older property cards don't indicate whether they were rented or owner occupied or not owner occupied. But looking at the property cards, it looks like the, um, you know, 148 and 127 were possibly, you know, rented prior and one, um, the middle one maybe wasn't just based on the owner's names, but you know, that's tricky, right? So, you know, it looks at you know at least for the last twenty years, possibly more. These were uh, all rentals, and you know I was just going to share my screen again just so we we see it. Um, 
you know, this is this is 148 right here. The further south one, here's um, here's the other one that has, you know, the addition in the back. So this is 140. And then here's the um, the other one, um, which um, yeah, which you know is in, it appears to be in really good shape, but you know it, it's hard to say. But at least for you know quite a bit of time, they have been rented, um, or you know the or, the owner has owned them. I don't you know I can't say that they've always been rented, but the owners owned them for twenty years, so it's not it's not as if they bought them necessarily six months ago when the other building was being built. I think that was asked, but I think they they've been owned prior to that. And they've always been a rental since he's owned them. Okay. Um, any other questions from the commissioners before we move to deliberation? Oh, Heidi has her hand up. It looks like some trees have been removed. Is that something that the current owner has done between the first and the second building? Um, I think that must have been a few years back. I think the the Google Maps is a little is a little old, is a little dated. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Seeing no other hands. Um, Nate, you want to help me structure this next part? So we have three properties in front of us for which we need to determine significance. Um, should we just go ahead with 120, can't remember the number, <laughs> the 120, whatever it is. 127. 127. Yeah, the, um, uh, yeah, I've got 126 on my chart here. That's well. correct. Okay. Um, yeah, we have not uh, done a significance review in a while. And actually, I think maybe Madeline, were you on the commission when we would review a property for its significance first? Are you familiar with that process? Or actually, show of hands to who is familiar with the process. I'm raising mine, but I know Pat has been here. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, I'm looking at the bylaw and I can okay. see the sort of three criteria. Yeah, that we consider. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to put that on the screen, Nate? Yeah, I can share the screen. Okay. I can. Is that legible, or is it should it be a little bigger? Uh, that's legible to me. Um. Sure. So, you know, the, this is, you know, section F in the bylaw standards for designation as a significant building, you know, so it meets the aid requirement. And then there's these numbered ones. One is the building is individually listed on or is contributing structure within an area listed on the National Register of Historic Places or is the subject of a pending application. And it is not, right? So I mentioned that we had looked at expanding the East Village National Register District, but it didn't include these properties. So. So I think um, at this point, maybe the best thing to do would be to ask commission members if they, if any of them believe that 126 uh, uh, Southeast Street warrants a discussion for significance, as opposed to mm -hmm. getting into why or why it might not be. Is there anyone who has an argument in favor of significance? I do not. I don't think I understand. You're saying. I think. Uh, that, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So typically, you know, the way the bala works, staff is the commission's designee to determine significance, and if staff determines it's significant, then it that's usually when it gets to the public hearing process with the commission. But there's also a provision where, as if the designee, me, can't make that determination, I refer it to the commission, and then the commission has to then first determine significance, and then determine whether or not it should be. Uh, preferably preserved or allow demolition. And so the hearing really right now is, you know, the significance hasn't been determined. Right. So going through for each, you know, each, um, each structure. 
But Robin, what do you mean? Are you saying, can you just um, clarify what you said? In the past, we used to go through each criteria and um, take votes around whether commission members felt that it was or wasn't significant. And um, then after going through all the, the criteria, in that case, it was there were like about, you know, eight or 10 different areas, four different votes, we determined significance. But if no one on the commission thinks that this building meets the mark of significance, we could shortcut that process <laughs> by uh, essentially um, dispensing with any deliberation if there's nobody in, in favor of the idea that it is historically significant. They can't make an argument that it's significant for, I mean, it was, an, I guess, I don't even know if this was an agricultural area, it seems like, you know, but, um, for this particular building and the information that I was able to gather, I don't see anything about it being in the context of a group of buildings or as part of a view shed, shed or mm -hmm. this historical or architectural value. Um, so that's why I was asking commission members if anyone felt there was an argument to be made for significance. If somebody said, for example, that, um, yes, I think that, um, the craftsmanship warrants significance, then we would vote on the basis of that. Does that make sense? I'm not, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just couldn't tell if you were, which way you were going. Okay. Oh, okay. So you think it's not significant? Yes, yeah. right. I don't think it's significant under any of the characteristics here. I agree with you. Okay. All right. I will say the same, I agree. I also agree. It's not not significant. Okay. Agreed. Agreed. I have a kind of follow up weird question, Robin, which is that based on that 1873 map, which shows Southeast Street, are we reasonably confident that the three buildings under discussion tonight are on that map? Um, based on the title research that I did, mm -hmm and that was distributed to the commission. The mm -hmm. only lot that I was confident there was a good chance <laughs> that the building in question corresponded with the building on the map would be the next property over. Okay. Simeon, Simeon Edwards. That's really um, helpful. Right, yeah. it did not look like the, um, this building did not look to come up on the map uh, around that time period from, from what I was looking at. Okay. Um, and the um, title chain, when when you review, the, as I've been learning to do this, when you review the title chain process, each each deed should reference the deed before it. And sometimes you get to an ending point because there's no deed before it. And sometimes you just get to an ending point because somebody has left that information off. And then you need to go and look in the index and see if you can pick up the trail again. Um, but based on the visual appearance of this building, and the fact that the title chain ended around the 20s, I think, um, and the fact that it didn't correspond particularly well to the maps that I look at, that's what I'm basing my opinion on. Okay, so we've taken care of the first so building. I think uh, we actually, so so I think at this point, um, we need to, we, see, we the commission seems to be in agreement, but we need to vote mm -hmm. uh, this building status as significant or not significant. So I need a motion and then uh, when I can ask for further discussion and then we can vote. Becky? I'll motion, I motion that we vote that this building is not historically significant. Okay, do I have a second? Second. And any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, seeing none, I'll go with a roll call vote, uh, starting with Hetty. Agreed, not, okay. not significant. Okay, uh, Becky? Agreed, not significant. Okay. Pat? Agreed, not significant. And Madeline? Agreed. And I agree as well. So that's a vote five to zero uh, in favor of determining that this building is not significant according to the demolition or the 
not to call the demolition delay bylaw anymore, <laughs> um, according to the bylaw. So one down, two to go. <laughs> Okay, so um, the next property is 140 Southeast Street. Um, and I'm gonna see if any commission members have comments before I make my comments. Um, feel free to raise your hand. I've got you guys, oh wait, I can, there. Do anyone that want to comment on 140 Southeast Street? Seem to have lost. I'm trying to get all of you in my screen here. Madeline has disappeared now. I can stop sharing if you'd like for now. My, my... Okay, okay. <laughs> so no comments from anybody? Okay. Um, so based on the research that I did for this building, um, and now of course I don't have the language in front of me. Um, I would say my concern at this point, when we look at a building and approve or um, reject a request for demolition, um, in terms of preservation, along with rehabilitating, well, along with imposing a demolition delay, um, the objective for the demolition delay would to have an outcome either to rehabilitate the building and preserve it, move it, salvage it uh, or document it. And I think my concern right now is that I, if, if this building is the building that appears on the 1860 map, um, some, and I'd like Nate to weigh on this, whether it warrants further documentation before demolition, um, just due to the age and the fact that we are, I know that it's not within the, um, within the historic district area but the fact that we're um trying to well we've had had a, couple, a number now of buildings come before us of older smaller more modest houses that would have been more characteristic of early amherst i think it's easy to overlook um these smaller buildings as um not particularly impressive um and i would just hate to see this one taken down before um maybe a more professional eye had a view of it and we maybe got some more pictures or or made a few more connections um so that that's that's my my one hesitation um is just documentation before demolition does anyone who want to weigh in And actually, you know what, I, I realize I'm getting, it's, it's a little bit challenging to um, organize these discussions, but I'm putting the, the cart before the horse a little bit because I'm really talking about preservation. But um, I, I feel like uh, there's an argument to be made for the potential for this building to be significant on the basis of a social context, depending what we find out about if we're able to find anything out about Simeon Edwards in that particular area. I, I sense that there might be a story there to be told, which would um, tip this building into the significant uh, camp. And I'm trying to think in the past, I think in circumstances like this, we have tabled or Nate can help me with this, tabled or delayed a vote to allow time for a little bit more information to come, not, not a lot of time, but a little, little bit more time to pursue that path a little bit further. So that might be what I'm suggesting here is that we, we table and um, the uh, significance vote on this particular structure to get more information between now and our next ability to meet so that we can make a better determination about um, a demolition delay. So I see that Pat has her hand up. Um, Robin, I'm, I'm agreeing with you that I think if indeed it is the structure that's on that map, that it does have a history um, that that needs to be documented. It doesn't necessarily mean that demolition can't proceed once that's done, but I, I do think that there needs to be documentation and um, the history taken into account, 
even though for the last 20 some odd years, it's been a rental that ha hasn't been cared for, um, the history is still important to document. Thank you. Becky? Um, I'm just, it seems to me, you've done a lot of research, Nate's tried that it that there isn't anything else and it isn't clear to me you're not sure this is the same house um, that's on the map. And it, it isn't clear to me what more there is to find out, I guess, is, is my question. And who will do that? Okay. And I mean, the, my response, that was my earlier question to Nate regarding whether or not, because I got to, um, I, I turned to, to researching these properties so late in the process that um, having, when you're, when you're doing research on, on houses, you kind of do this back and forth between, you know, you go to the title chain, you go to the map. Once you get the name Simeon Edwards, like I tried to do a newspaper search and there were so many, I wasn't expecting so many Simeon Edwards to pop up. Sometimes you can get information there um, with the name, the special collection search might be different. And you can tell me if that's true or not, but that, that would be, um, as I, especially in terms of special collections and somebody who has a stronger grasp of the um, history of Amherst and it's, um, you know, the, the kind of the players of that era, um, that's what I would be looking for. So I don't know if you want to jump in, Nate, and give your- Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I guess I'm, you know, I guess I would say if, for instance, the commission found this building to be significant, the next step is, you know, is the impact of its loss enough to have it be preferably preserved or allow the demolition to proceed. And so, um, you know, I, I almost want to take it to that next question because, um, you know, we could, I mean, we could ask the applicant to have photo documentation, you know, do we, what, I guess, I guess I'm just curious, what other, are we, would we want that documentation to help whether it should be preferably preserved or are we, you know, are we concerned enough that if it's, that if it's not there, that the loss of, of it is, is, you know, detrimental somehow to the character and history of, of, you know, you know, of Amherst and specifically that neighborhood. And so I'm, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I could go either way. We could continue the hearing. It has to be to a date certain. I'm, I will say I have limited time to research, um, yeah. you know, and then I would really want to make sure we are clear with the applicant what kind of documentation we would want. And if it's photo documentation, I think that could happen pretty easily. Is it, you know, um, additional photographs on the interior, they might have to give notice to tenants, but I guess I, I just would want to make sure, you know, what kind of documentation, Robin, are you looking for that could or couldn't happen with the building there? For instance, we can always look at the history um, unless we think that's really important in terms of weighing its significance or its preferably preserved status. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it, it's a, it, it is a confusing decision tree, right? Because you, 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 we weigh on, a, we should have a relatively straightforward um, discussion about whether it's significant or not. And I seem right. to be getting stuck on that because I feel like I don't have quite enough information to definitively claim that it is, in which point I would argue for a request to, for further documentation, for photographs, um, and I, I don't know enough at this point um, about um, documenting internal structures and what value that has. I guess I'm trying to figure out what's the value to the town is um, creating a form B for a building that's gonna be demolished an important part of our inventorying if it is you know, it's such an early part of the town's history. Um, these, are all, these are all questions that I have, so. Um, <laughs> I don't think that we've had anybody do a um, like a structural report, or and maybe it doesn't um, it doesn't rise to that that level. Um, there's just something about there's like for me there's something about when I get to that point where I'm researching it and I see the title name and I see it on the map and I think oh you know this is so um, is there can you give any guidance in terms of what the town how much effort the town is concerned about in terms of getting something inventory that's going to be demolished? Yeah, I mean, 
I guess it would, it would, it would be a little like um, kind of part and parcel with doing that research, right? So if we were to complete an inventory form now, you know, we could list the architecture, we'd have a questionable age and history. And so we have to kind of continue to do that research. You know, we could describe the architecture now, we could, but we wouldn't be able to, um, you know, this inventory form has, you know, kind of two narrative sections, one's on the architectural description, one's on kind of the social ownership, you know, political yeah. history of it. And so yeah. I feel we'd have to just continue that anyways as part of that uh, inventory. Okay. Um, I was gonna say, I feel like architecturally it does look old, but I'm not sure it's, you know, right. So I didn't deem it significant because I'm not sure it met the criteria in the bylaw in terms of its, right. Is it an exemplary style? Is it part right. of certain craftsmanship? Is it, even if it's a part of the, say, Edwards family or Watson farm family, is that enough to um, make it significant? I just, I just couldn't say yes. Yep, yep. Um, and I will say that um, it certainly any of my commissioners are free to uh, suggest or to, to make a motion to deem it not significant, and we can take a vote um, if if we feel like a discussion is done. That's you know that's the other option. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm assuming that the, the applicant is amenable if we want to have any more pictures taken. Um, we could, but. Okay. Can we come, can, is it possible to um, come back and let the brain cogitate a little bit? <laughs> um, come back to this decision once we've looked at the third building? Sure, sure. Let me just. Okay. I know that's a bit backwards, but yeah, I just that, feel like. Yep. I don't want to, yeah. Yeah, um, Becky has her hand up. Oh, I was just going to make a motion to um, suggest it's not significant, oh, but okay. if, if Hetty wants to, I mean, it's fine to- Okay, if you want to pause- Take a few minutes, to yes. <laughs> okay. okay, why don't we do that? So that's uh, 148, is that right? 148 Southeast Street? No, it's 140. I think it's 140. Right, so the middle house was 140 and now we'd move on to 148. Yes, right. So we've just paused on 140 and we're moving forward to 148, the Gambrel Roof uh, 1927 Circa house. And again, um, we can, uh, I can ask the commissioners if anybody uh, feels they have an argument for um, voting this property being historically significant based on the criteria in the bylaw. Okay, so then I could ask commissioners uh, if anybody would be interested in making a motion related to 148 Southeast Street in terms of its historical significance. I, I would make a motion that the building at 148 Southeast Street is not significant. Okay, do we have a second to that motion? I can second that. So Becky seconds. Uh, so any other further discussion on 148 South Street in terms of historical significance? No, okay, so we will go to a vote. Uh, so we are voting on, uh, the motion before us is to affirm that 148 Southeast Street is not historically significant according to the bylaw. Um, Madeline, your vote. Right, yeah, I agree. Okay, uh, Becky? I voted as not significant. Okay, uh, Pat? I agree, it's not significant. Okay, and Hetty? Not significant. And I also vote in the affirmative not significant. So that was a 5-0 vote for 148 Southeast Street, uh, not significant according to the um, conditions of the bylaw. So now we're back to 148, that was quick. <laughs> so with the um the house in the middle yep 148 that, i mean 140 sorry yep that is possibly older and possibly related to the name of a building the name associated with a building on the 1873 hampshire map yep. i would like to see a little bit more information gathered for a Form B listing. I do know that um, 
under discussion in the town for the central fire station that they are looking for a, to complete a form B for the central fire station, even though the town needs a new fire station. And in, you know, um, so it's just a, a kind of another layer of documentation, maybe some more pictures of the interior. Um, okay. I um, don't know how long that process would take or whether we need to specify that. Okay. Um, so the um, the issue before us is whether, so given that that we're, we're, at least two of us are interested in a little bit more information, but as Nate has pointed out, most of that probably doesn't require the building being standing. Um, does anybody want to make a motion regarding the building status status as significant or not significant? Um, Becky? Well, I would like to make a motion um, stating that it is not significant, um, but I think we, can we also add if people want more documentation that they can do so? I think, yeah, I think that we can, um, we can vote on the status of, ex of its significance and um, handle the issue of documentation separately. Okay. Um, and I, so I think, uh, oh, so, so we have a motion from Becky. Do we have a second? I second. Oh, Pat seconds. Okay. And I, I just want to add to that is sure. that I think Hetty's suggestion that the documentation take the, the, the form of a form B um, and so that the house will be uh, recorded with whatever history we know and that you've you've delved into, Robin. I I, I have a tendency to, to agree with Nate that there probably isn't a whole lot more than that, but that's enough to to make claim to its history. And so that that would be my suggestion in addition to the second. Okay, um, Nate. Sure, I was going to um, just share my screen again. The um, so, you know, if we're, this is, you know, my guess is this, this is visible, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Here's the house. So here's the front of the house. You know, this would be the older section. Uh, the mansard roof is, um, so it could be an old addition, but possibly not original. And I was going to say that it just, on College Street, there's a few homes here um, that are of similar style, um, you know, tucked in here. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're listed as being built in 1900. Uh, and they're not on the 1873 map. So 1900, could, you know, it could be late 19th century. But um, anyways, I was going to say that it looks that they're similar to these. Um, there was three at one point, um, but now two homes. And so, you know, it, it could be that they're, you know, that whether it was the same family or that they were a type of worker housing. I mean, we had said that these homes I haven't researched it, but that they were, they were owned by workers and also maybe by African-American families. And so there is some history here. I, but again, there's not a lot of research uh, sometimes on some, of, on some of the homes that are outside districts or things that haven't been inventoried. But you know, I, I do think that we could do a little bit more research. I guess the question still goes back to, you know, let's just say for devil's advocate, we have a discussion that we say they're significant the next question is: Are the is it worth being properly preserved? And I guess that's where um, you know, I don't want to I don't want to belabor it, but um, you know, if we find them not significant, I, yeah, I guess we maybe want to say it with a condition that it still be researched. I don't know. I just I want to make sure we're you know we have we have a good process after that after the vote. Um, yeah, um, I, I agree, and I'm gonna, was going to backtrack myself a little bit. We're in the just we we have a motion before us uh, to. Uh, that the that the property is not historically significant. We have a second. We're in the um, additional discussion section, and I was going to backtrack on my own statement earlier to say that I, I would feel com comfortable voting uh, that this property is not significant simply because it has lost most of its historic integrity. Yeah. Um, 
I think I was looking for a basis to vote in the affirmative or in the negative for the significance part. That, that's what was challenging me. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it had significance at a certain point. There's still aspects of it that are probably worth documenting, which we could do on a voluntary basis with the staff, with your, either with the commission um, or and, and or the owner um, and go forward in that regard. So that would be, if that helps anybody make their decision around a vote for or against significance, that's what I would say. There was some, if that helps clarify things. Yeah, I think I, I would vote uh, that it's not significant based on what you're saying, Robin. And I was thinking of abstaining, um, but I think I'll vote in the affirmative. Okay. Do we have any other discussion between commissioners? Okay, then I think- yeah, Let me leave you with a little idea though. <laughs> because, because you know, I bet you in the 1880s and 1890s that the people who lived in these three homes had no problem walking up to the East Village Center of Amherst and getting what they needed there, whether it was employment yeah. or, you know, so um, well, that, yeah, yeah. that's, I think, what we've been trying to kind of tease out here. Um, and we'd, we'd like to document that. Okay, um, <clears throat> so if there's no further discussion, we can go ahead with the vote. Uh, the motion before us is in the affirmative uh, that the property is determined to be not historically significant uh, mm -hmm. according to the bylaw. So I will start with Pat. I agree, it's not a significant property. Okay, uh, Madeline. I agree. Becky. I vote it's not significant. Okay, uh, Hetty. Not significant. And I also vote in the affirmative. So that's a 5-0 vote uh, that this property has been termed not historically significant in the terms of the bylaw. Um, so at this point, I think the question, um, the questions around documentation, Nate, or I understand that uh, the town's resources are flat out for doing this kind of documentation. This is where the lovely volunteers on the commission can come in if they want to help out <laughs> um, if we want to start working on a form B for this property. Um, I think my only question would be, I would just love to get in there and um, particularly because I want to learn to understand how to recognize, um, now that I've had some training, how to recognize the historic features of the property um, and take more pictures. And I think that would be it unless anybody else has any other, uh, any other requests. No, I mean, I think, John, you're here. I think we could, you know, follow up with an email and set a date, you know, the next few weeks and work with, you know, you and the owner to, uh, to have a site visit if that's, if that's possible, you know, for photo documentation. I think that, you know. Uh, I believe that, <clears throat> I believe that would be fine. Okay, great. Thanks. And who would be responsible for doing the form B? The owner? Um, the four, so I'm working on form Bs as part of my job now at PVPC. Um, form Bs are complicated and technical and really require pretty specific training. So um, it's something that I've thought about trying to get a subgroup of the Historic Commission to work on together so that I'm not doing form Bs all day and all night. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, I, Robin, I can help. So if you want to, you know, I can help. Um... I know they have requirements for the map and formatting pictures. And so I think, you know, if Robin and I can work on the form B, if people, you know, if, if anyone wants to help with research, I don't mind working on the form. And then, you know, anyone can submit, anyone can complete a form B. I think the owners have done the research. There really isn't a lot. And I, I think it's then on us, staff and commission to do that. Um, you know, and I, uh, you know, so if there's, you know, for instance, uh, when we were looking at local historic districts, volunteers on the committee end up doing form Bs and they did a good job, you know, doing a bibliography, you know, a bibliography, doing references and yeah. finding that. So I think some of that is what we'd have to do and, you know, uh, work with special collections and go to the library and do a little bit more digging. But I think yeah. it's something that we could pull together. Yep. Okay. So I think, um, let's see, I think we were supposed to close the hearing before we voted maybe, I don't remember. <laughs> No, no, sometimes I said that sometimes, you know, yeah, uh, people go either way, but I think now we can have a motion to close the hearing. Sometimes we like to keep it open just in case another 
tidbit of information comes in and we, if we close the hearing, we have to reopen it to oh. allow new information. So I don't mind going. Okay. And did, we, we did. did we miss the opportunity for public comment in the hearing or nope, is there- The hearing's still open so you can- uh, oh, Okay. All right. So um, we should give the, the public opportunity to comment. Um, there's, there's two members in the public. Oh, there's one hand raised. Uh, Hilda, you can unmute yourself. My only concern listening to this conversation is that your credibility may be a little bit at stake here if it pushes it too far because it doesn't look like a house that has any integrity left at all of, of an old house. And I think you might be better off saving your your reputation for something that's really important. Because it looks like whatever units are going to be lost here are going to be made up several times over by the new building, which would be more attractive. And I'm I'm a preservationist. I don't want to tear anything down, but I I, I worry about your credibility here if you put too too much emphasis on documenting and all that, and and the time in a form B is it worth it? That that's just my two cents. Okay. Thank you, Hilda. Save save your energy for the big one. <laughs> um, thanks, Hilda. And we uh, got some big ones coming. I'm <laughs> counting on your energy. Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, any other members of the public who would like to make a comment? And seeing no hands, uh, I think we move to a motion to close this public hearing. So moved. Do I have a second? A second. Uh, and uh, roll call vote, Hetty? Yes. Becky? Yes. Madeline? Yes. Pat? Uh, Pat, you're muted. I saw you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I vote For the record. Yes. <laughs> Five zero uh, vote to close the public hearing. And uh, I believe that concludes our public meeting hearing for this evening. It does. Uh, John, thank you. And thank, yeah. thank you for the owner. I was going to say we can adjourn. I'll send an email to the commission as follow up just to try to schedule the next meeting. And then, John, I'll be reaching out to you just for a date. Sure. And, and, visit the, the site. Um, you know, I'll kindly disagree with Hilda. I think, you know, we'll put the effort in to document it. I, you know, whether or not it's yeah. a questionably significant, I do think it's, it's nice to document structures that may be humble and modest because, you know, just to, to have that, uh, have that piece of history. Um, you know, like I said, there was a picture maybe from the seventies of this house, but it'd be nice to have a follow-up and some, you know, we can include that, that older picture in the form B and just kind of have it as a nice catalog you know, record of it. So, um, so no, yeah, it, uh, I'm sorry, it's okay. I just think the pictures that you, when you walk, drove up College Street on Google Maps, yeah. be good to put those in as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. If there's any kind of stylistic similarity. Right. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a good point. I, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Um, uh, your job is not easy. Um, and I, uh, I did, I did go back to a couple of meetings. I, I spoke with Nate about, you know, what I would need to know. And I was just, I just fell a little bit short. I think um, had I gotten some interior pictures of the, of the home, maybe that would have helped uh, clarify anything, but I do appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, commission members, I'll follow up with email just to confirm a next meeting date. And um, you know. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Okay, all right. we're, we're adjourned. <laughs>